Hi, I'm Brian, and it's Wild Card Wednesday. It's a video where I do wherever I want once a week. I do a nice polished video on Sunday, and on Sunday it's going to be on knock sensors, uh, how to put one in on a Chevy. And while there's already a bunch of videos on that, um, I'm going to see if I can get some value added to it. I had to really learn a lot about knock sensors to diagnose the problem that I had on that video that's going to be posted on Sunday. And with my head being so full and while I understand and remember everything, I want to share it with you and make you the smart manly man or clever woman, <laughs> impress your friends at the bar or something, that you want to be. So let's, uh, let's fill in the gaps in the knock sensor uh, information disconnect. Modern cars are getting more and more complicated. Uh, initially cars didn't have to have a knock sensor because their compression ratios were low enough that there was no pre-detonation, there was no spark plug knock, there's no problem with that. But when they increase the compression ratio, your diesel, your gasoline engine starts to run like a diesel. Uh, the way that an engine works is you got the suck, squeeze, bang, blow. And it looks like this. This is the top of your cylinder head or your cylinder combustion chamber. So imagine I got valves and a spark plug here and we've got a hollow cylinder and we got a piston. So for a means of demonstration we suck in air and fuel if it's a gasoline engine with an aux sensor and then we squeeze it and we get it super heated by squeezing it. All those molecules that were kind of just hanging out get squeezed and they vibrate faster and harder so um, there is a propensity to get hot. And that's the way that diesels fire, is they compress the hot air, they superheat the air, and then squirt in fuel. Bang! So how does a gas engine start to run like a diesel engine? Well, if you run a low-octane fuel, it doesn't burn very easy, doesn't burn completely. It leaves a bunch of hydrocarbons, uh, carbon and black crap, all in the top of your cylinder. And what that does is that can glow. Just like on a campfire, the coals in a campfire, those will glow and they'll pre-detonate your air fuel mixture and then it'll go bang before the piston gets all the way to the top. Now imagine this, you've got your air fuel mixture, you got your little TNT mixture kind of stuff going, I'm just being, you know, just for visual. I watch too much Wiley Coyote. So it gets to the top, this is already glowing, it ignites before it gets to the top, bang! And then the spark plug goes bang. So you have convergent uh, flame fields coming together and uh, trying to burn a hole in the top of your poor little piston. You don't need that. So how is your car going to know if this is happening and what is your car going to do about it? That's where your knock sensor comes in. This is tuned uh, to listen in. It's like an eardrum. It's built like an eardrum and when I tear this apart you're going to see why. So this listens for that knock, that pre-detonation and you know basically tells the computer, it's like the brain of the car, to retard the timing. Uh, it does that through the ignition. Mechanically your timing's the same. Uh, but your ignition timing changes. When you come up, remember there's spark plug and valves in this. So when the piston gets to top dead center, your spark plug fires. And usually your timing set at like 10 degrees, 6 degrees, 5, 11, some kind of degrees before top dead center for your ignition timing. Before top dead center is just before the piston's at the top, your spark plug fires. So it gets the fire going, starts to spread out in the cylinder, so that when it's up and starts to come down, boom, it's at full expansion. That chemical reaction uh, is taking place and going great. So if it's already happening too early because you've got pre-detonation and you've got convergent flames or flame that's coming across the side like the illustration shows, basically what it'll do is it'll start backing your timing off. It will back it up into where you're firing uh, after top dead center. And basically what that does is it preserves your engine. If you're pre-detonating all the time and you're going bang before it gets to the top, that's a lot of weight and pressure on your connecting rods, on your connecting rod bearings, on your piston. Um, you can burn a hole in your piston as I said before. And it can also mess up the wrist pin on your piston. So that's why you have a knock sensor. That's how knock sensors work. Let's talk more specifically about the sensor now. So as I said, you've got your modern car ones um, that are often two pin and these are fine tuned to the vehicle. And then you've got your wide band sensors. And this is kind of an in-between thing. You saw the C on it. The other truck that I was working on, you'll see on Sunday, had an A sensor. Now I used aftermarket sensors the first time it came in and that just threw me for a frickin' loop because the aftermarket sensors were throwing the same code that the failed factory, uh, 
I just called him an oxygen sensor, didn't I? Did I mention I'm on take 12 of this video? <laughs> My brain is cooked. Don't use aftermarket knock sensors on a Chevy. I wouldn't use them on most of anything, much of anything. If you can do a factory one, you're better off. Because the newer they are, you know, they're not that uh, generic stuff anymore. The newer they are, they're tuned to the pinging of your engine. Why are they so picky? You know, first we have to have a knock sensor because we have uh, higher compression ratios. Why do we have to have higher compression ratios? Because people don't just want to get to A and B in a car, a horseless carriage. They want to have better gas mileage and power. And that higher compression ratio gives you that. And you got to have higher compression ratios if you're going to run um, things like turbos and superchargers and stuff. So we've got all that figured out. So let's make it more complicated from there. The problem that they had with knock sensors is that they were always backing off that timing um, because they thought something was ignition knock when it was something in that wide band of vibration, you know, between 6,000 and 9,000 hertz. You know, like maybe you had an engine knock, like a rod knock, or what if you had some other kind of vibration? You had a bad water pump pulley, or you had a bad alternator pulley, or something else, and so you get knock sensor codes. You gotta watch out for that. Um, so they get these uh, fancy pants, you know, narrow range tuned knock sensors so that they can really pick up on exactly what it is. There's two different testing procedures for these. Now I'm gonna share the love. It's a great video, it's great information. I really wish that I'd have had this video to watch myself previous, you know, to doing this uh, Chevy pickup truck. Because I had to gather information from all over the place. So you can do a voltage drop test. I'm going to send you a bunch of links in the description here. So I'm going to do a link to Eric the Car Guy's video on his Subaru so you can learn how to do the voltage drop test on these. And then I'm going to send you to a link on uh, ADP training, uh, Mandy, who's freaking awesome smart as can be. He's a little self-conscious about his voice in the videos. He's got a little bit of an accent. I can't talk in English as it is and it's my primary language. This guy talks in English. He does great with it and people give him crap about it because he has an accent. Go leave a call. Give him some freaking love. That's all I'm saying. That guy gives me love. I share this stuff with you. You know, get back to the source and give him a thumbs up on his video. Subscribe to his channel, ADP Training. Um, but basically he shows you how to test these new ones. The old ones you could use a wrench and just bang on the engine and that wide range was easily achieved with it, you know, banging with the wrench because it, it's a wide target. It's the broad side of a barn. You can hit that. Knock sensors have a little crystal inside of them, a little piezoelectric thing. So we've got our ground and our positive because this is a single wire sensor so it uses the body to ground. So we're grounding through all of this back to here. We've cleaned the vise and you know so it'll stick and everything. But anyway, if you just kind of tap on this, trying to stimulate pre-detonation. Did that get up to 0.8? I can't see because the screen's at an angle. But anyway, this sensor's good. This is what a good sensor looks like on this uh, on this multimeter. These new ones, there's no way you're gonna hit you know like that tiny little mailbox size you know, gap, you know, using the same analogy, you know, with your baseball or your wrench tapping along. So the way you get these to read out so that you can test them, as I learned from Mandy, is you basically preload the engine. It has to have a load like it's driving somewhere. So foot on the brake, put it in drive, step on the gas so it's loaded up, and then run it out of gas. Well, how are you going to do that? You're going to time it just right and run it? No, just pull the fuel pump relay out. It'll run out of gas because the pump will stop, it'll burn what's in it, and it will knock, and you'll be able to get uh, the voltage from it. When you're doing a voltage test on these, I'm just going to throw this out there for you. You have to have it set to alternating current voltage because these piezoelectric crystals in here and in here, they generate an alternating current voltage. Now let's talk a little bit more about this inner ear. Because like, you know, like with these, like you say, you can tap with a wrench, hook up to this, same thing, alternating current generates it. Key off, engine off, and you can see if you're getting a good readout from this. But you can also do a resistance test on it, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Why a resistance test? What the heck? What's in these things? Let's take a look and find out. That's a great question. So this is like your eardrum. This is your ceramic crystal a uh, bit of goodness, a little wafer of happy alternating current voltage stuff. 
So the crystal, you'll have a ceramic and then something else. Just like a catalytic converter, you have a ceramic honeycomb. And then you also, uh, in the honeycomb, you have the business end of it, which is platinum, palladium, and rhodium. And that gets rid of your NOx and your hydrocarbons and your carbon monoxide. So on this, you've got ceramic. And then what's in the ceramic? Uh, crystal. And you can have quartz. You can have tourmaline. Or you can have... Oh shucks, what's the name of the other one? The other one is gallium phosphate. I always want to say sulfide, but it's gallium phosphate. And they generate uh, voltage whenever you squish them or shake them. So vibration and pressure cause them to generate a voltage. So with this spring and with this uh, balance weight that's in there, that copper weight that's up in there, I'm hiding the resistor. Don't look at the resistor. <laughs> Just look at that little uh, <laughs> balance weight. So basically these are crimped in there together. So it's always got a little pressure, so you're creating a little bit of voltage, but it's like one volt, it's really low voltage. And then your computer puts out five volts direct current to this, and then there's a resistor and with alternating current basically riding on 2.5 volts back to the computer. So you have to have a voltage or something to carry it back to the computer. You got your wiring to do that, you just need a single wire. So let's look in this. You got the spring, you've got your crystal, all the weight of it's in this little guy. I mean, that's heavy. This weighs like basically nothing. Let's talk about the resistor in there. Now, the resistor is important because uh, it tells your computer, it helps with the whole bias voltage thing. It helps your computer diagnostic system, your onboard second generation diagnostic system, to know if this is plugged in or if something's wrong or something's bad. So a lot of guys, if they don't want a knock sensor and they don't care about if their vehicle is knocking or whatever, like a race car, you just never ever wanted to have your, your ignition retarded or whatever, you got all kinds of stuff going on, you can actually take the resistor and plug that right into the plug. And uh, well, with the two plug one typically is what you'll see, like on this, they'll just plug the resistor ends into there and bypass it. But uh, Anyway, this resistor, if you look at it really close, you can see uh, going starting from this side, it goes brown, black, black, orange, brown. So brown's number one. And the way that these work on a five band one is that your first three are your digits. So one, zero, zero, and then your orange is your multiplier. And then the last one is the tolerance. Like how good is this thing? You know how accurate is this uh, resistance so you got one zero zero and then orange is uh, a thousand or a k or kilo and then it's plus or minus brown is one again just like it's you know one here or plus or minus one there so this is a hundred thousand so this is out of a 3.8 liter gm it looks just like the the one that i was doing the video on sunday on but it's a c not an a so basically, um, you, you have the resistor, so you can have your 5 volt voltage go through here to ground, but there's a resistor in the way. So that way you don't have a short to ground, your computer can see that there's something there. Um, you know, basically it's happy. So that's, the, that's what's inside these things. That's the way they work. Just think of them as like an ear or like a microphone and just basically this is your computer's ear to listen for knock. These are mounted in the engine block uh, next to your cylinder, your pistons so it can hear it and uh, like I say on the Chevy it uses two of them so it's like having two ears listening at the same time on either end of the engine and it just calls them bank one, bank two but basically bank one's the front one, bank two's the back. You got a wire harness with a blue wire and a green wire, the aftermarket ones anyway and uh, what were they, pins 11 and 51 on the computer? It's all in the video that I'm going to be doing. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do the video because I saw that truck four times. I got so much footage of all the different tests that I did because I, I ruled out the knock sensor. I shouldn't have, but I ruled it out because um, basically it would only go at 70 miles an hour. It would only set the code. You know, I'd get that funky vibration like it was disconnected or shorted to ground or, you know, low input at 70 miles an hour for two minutes so it was really tricky but man did I really learn a lot and so that's what this video was about is just sharing with you what is a knock sensor how does it work why do we have a knock sensor 
And uh, the only thing I haven't covered is who invented the knock sensor. And then I'd have the who, what, why, when, and how. <laughs> anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I don't know why I had such a hard time filming this thing. Like I say, I had, you know, more than 10 takes to get this thing done. So, hope you appreciate it. If you did, um, you can thank me by clicking thumbs up on ADB, ADP Training's video. Go give Mandy some freaking love. That guy needs some love. He's got 50,000 subscribers, something like that. He should have a lot more than that because that guy, he just, he is so stinking smart and he puts so much work into his video. I just really want to see him succeed. Um, show Eric the car guy some love. Check out his video. Also, go and check out the slideshow on uh, slideshare.net. Uh, I've got a link in the description. A gentleman by the name of uh, Soam Coley. But he's this really smart guy, did a great slideshow on it and uh, talks a little bit more about it. And there's a lot of great text in there, you know, like the materials. Tourmaline, I don't know how I remember that, Galme Galamine, Gallium? I can't remember. Gallium phosphate. That's where I got all that stuff from. So, that's stuff that you don't really need to know, but doggone it, you sound smart if you could freaking remember it. <laughs> so... Thanks for watching my video. Check out the links and stay tuned for Sunday and uh, show you more about that uh, elusive Silverado. And if you have a silver lot, Silverado, use the most up-to-date AC Delco dealership sensor you can get. They're $100, gosh dang it, instead of $30. But it's worth it because they'll work. Whereas the other ones don't. Cheers.